Hey guys, I wanted to check in with another video today. Um, I just feel like lots of energy flowing through. Um, yeah, it's so interesting. Earlier in, in the day, I was just feeling like crushed like, and just like I was getting annihilated by darkness. I couldn't even like, there was like, I was just being so smothered, you know, and drowned by it. It's like, I couldn't even push up. There was just nothing to do, but just like kind of lay down before me like, oh my God, okay. Just fucking kill me already, you know? <laughs> just take me already, it's over, I give up. I just like couldn't, um, yeah, I, my, I couldn't fight it. Uh, and it's so interesting, that moment, there was this moment where even on a subconscious level or something, something just gave up and gave into it, like, fuck. <laughs> We're no match against this, we got nothing. And then I felt like a lot of light surged through in that moment, and I was like, oh, that's so interesting. It's like a portal, sometimes when you're so crushed by darkness. Um, like you're just all the way crushed, and you just give up, and you just, let yourself be all the way defeated. Uh, yeah, it's like, that's like a, somehow, <laughs> you just like pop out into light. Not like all the way. Still feel like darkness happening and transformation happening. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I came here for love, you know, I came to England for love. Uh, it's just been so hard opening being here. That was su such an interesting thing. Uh, when I was feeling just crushed by darkness and like almost like I couldn't breathe, like I was wondering like, am I gonna just literally be crushed? Like, am I not gonna be able to breathe? <laughs> Is that how this ends? <laughs> I still felt like this beaming heart energy, like such an open heart, so much love. Like I've just been feeling so much love since I've been in England. I've been going through all kinds of insanity, darkness, I feel like uh, getting just, you just thrashed by dark entities at times. Uh, that's one perception I have of the darkness that I've been going through. Um, the mind can come up with all kinds of perceptions and it's best just to feel into like your intuitive knowing and and say it is, say it is whatever, a darkness that's scary to you, um, like a dark entity or something. You can always kind of feel from the highest perspective how even that serves, how even that's sent to you by God, and how even that's part of your divine fate to grow you into your highest. You know, I don't even want to say like human potentiality, but that there's some truth to that, but just your highest, hmm, grow you into your most humble yet powerful self, you know? There's nothing like darkness that humbles you, yet forces you to dig deep, really deep, deeper than ever, to find more of your strength and more of your power. And that's what I've noticed with power. If, you, if you're not humble with the power that comes online, it, it's no longer power. <laughs> it's not, it can be like egoic power and some people might fall for it and that's probably how cults start and crazy shit like that. Uh, but it's not divine power anymore when there's arrogance with it or when there's this pridefulness or when there's this ego force that's like claiming the power, you know? <laughs> and I only know that because I've done it, you know? I've done it. <laughs> that's how we know things. We got to fucking do it. And be like, oh, <laughs> where'd the power go? Oh, I thought it was Matthew's power. <laughs> like God's like, no, no. No, no. So I've noticed to stay if you start feeling a lot of divine power, it's like so important to like know it's not your power and to stay soft, to stay gentle, to stay compassionate and loving towards others, to know how to put yourself on a pedestal and make others feel inferior and all this nonsense. Like to just stay true to your heart, stay, you know, just, just keep giving it over to the divine. Keep giving your life over to the divine. Um, you know, it's like, she's the powerful one. She's the healer. She's the one who works magic through you, who works the miracles through you. You're just this conduit, right? You're a humble conduit, a humble servant. 
And that's why I feel like I'm in England. I'm just here being a humble servant and I've just been getting, like I said, crushed with darkness in all types of ways. And it's been a lot for the ego and the ego's wanted to run <laughs> quite a few times. I just even committed to, to staying here a bit longer today. Um, well, I guess I had committed, but I just I paid her the rest of the money today, which was nice. And I could feel my ego structure structure like clench and go into contraction, like, oh, now we're now we're it's really we're we're really here for a while. And I was like, yeah, we're here, we're here for service. Uh, I can feel like um, one of the things that's been coming through um, is maybe the woman that I came here to see. Maybe we created something dark in past lives together. Uh, and I'm here kind of working through that darkness we created. Um, I don't know. Uh, Kaya Ray or something, this woman on uh, YouTube. Um, she talks about that, how we're drawn to people in this lifetime that we created karma with in past lives because in this lifetime we have the light we have the capacity we have the spaciousness and the love to heal all that past karma we created to to kind of burn through all that karmic debris and i, I resonated with that and i could see that in all of these kind of twin flame type connections i've had uh with beings um in this life i could see it's like whoa there there's something there that's just so uh so much more than just this life, you know? Um, yeah, and I don't know, when I, when I was talking about that, I could feel the energy that was up here kind of just went down into my feet. And sometimes that's a sign that it's like a deadness, like it's, that could be like that part, that perception of mine could be kind of false, you know? It could be just a mind could just be a mind thing or sometimes when my energy goes down into my feet when I'm speaking, it's because I'm afraid to share something and I'm, ah, uh, it's scary. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's something I'm always attuning to when I speak is how alive it's feeling in my body because truth tends to feel really alive, really kind of juicy, uh, really kind of yummy in a way. Um, even if it, even if you're scared to say it, even if it's kind of whatever, humiliating or you're embarrassed or you're ashamed, uh, the truth hat carries something with it. It carries its own reverberations. It's a powerful thing to just tell the truth. And so when I'm speaking, either into this camera or with a client or just with anyone, I'm always internally, you know, uh, feeling into like, okay, is this actually true? Like my body, our bodies are really, uh, really good instruments to discern truth. Like our bodies don't lie. And so, yeah, when I said that whole thing about, man, maybe we created a lot of past life pain together. We're in this life, we, the, the reason we're, and now, you know, or maybe it's, it could be that it's just, not true to talk so specifically about it. I don't know. But but the larger point I'm getting at is truth feels alive. Um, divine power feels alive. Uh, egoic kind of perceptions that are maybe just something we're getting lost in and confused in because things don't make sense to us. We're not understanding something, so we're looking to grab onto some explanation. Those, like if it's an egoic truth, or an egoic idea, it, it can kind of feel dead. When you go to say it, when you go to write it, it can just like, ah, eh, it's not, mm -mm. But the truth, capital T truth, it tends to feel really alive. And so we get, just, we get to learn that in real time with me. Like that's how I move with energy. Um, and then maybe you can kind of pick that up in your own body. Maybe you can kind of feel the resonance. You, and I bet you, whether you know it or not, when I'm speaking, you can feel the resonance of truth in your own body and sometimes you can't because I have that with spiritual teachers I listen to. Sometimes they're speaking and I'm just like, I'm getting attuned to this, uh, this reverberation of truth that they're speaking. And then all of a sudden I'll start to sense some of their own shadow or egoic kind of uh, 
residue start to come into the teaching a little bit here and there and I'll, and I'll notice like the reverberations change and I'm like, mm, not as attuned to that. I'm not, I can't attune to your ego so well, you know, I'm not here to attune. And everyone can, everyone does this because everyone's a human being. So every spiritual teacher, no matter how great, shards of ego are going to come through. It's not like, I mean, yeah, maybe there's some ascended masters that come here once in a while on earth where everything they say, like a Sri Ananda Maya Ma, is just like, <laughs> we could just say perfect, you know, is pure. Uh, but that's like, you know, one in however billion, uh, most anyone on earth that's a spiritual teacher they're gonna sh shards of their own ego are gonna come through the teaching shards of their own opinions that are just kind of <laughs> not <laughs> the capital t truth they're just gonna come through and and that's why it's so important to have your own discernment for the reverberations and the energy of truth and i'm sure other teachers that i listen to i'm sure when they speak something that's not quite a tune they can feel it and it's nice to have really humble teachers because they'll take accountability too sometimes. And they'll be like, hey, yeah, I was wrong there. I'm sorry, I'm a human. And that's, that, that's the teacher you want. You don't, you don't need your spiritual teacher to be perfect, right? And to just speak perfect purity in every moment. It's like, no, we just need him to be accountable and humble and honest. And, and that's it. That can go so far. And I have those teachers and that's great. One of my teachers, <laughs> she really... <laughs> She really finds, she's, I don't understand how pure she is when she speaks. It's really bizarre, actually. I'm like, where is your human? Why don't you ever make a mistake? Uh, and of course, she's dropped the ball with me a couple times here and there in some small ways. And, uh, which is nice. It's nice when your spiritual teacher that maybe you put on a pedestal kind of drops the ball. <laughs> and then you get to see, oh, I can make mistakes. <laughs> cool. <laughs> like oh that person I really admire made a mistake oh, and they didn't beat themselves up about it and they handled it so well and it's like cool I get to do that too I, and it's like gives yourself that freedom but yeah um yeah so yeah it just feels good to share I, I'm I'm at this place now where I'm, I feel really at home here. Uh, I just feel like I'm in a community. Because um, I am, in a sense. And so I'm getting a lot of rest and I have, all, I have a lot more energy. And so I was thinking today, like, why am I... I've, I've had this impulse to come up to share a second video today, like, uh, more than once. And, I'm, and I was thinking today, I had this... Why am I limiting myself to one video if there's something authentic that's coming up that wants to share? Like, why do I have to say just one video a day? And I, and I remember it's because when I was living in my car, I really needed to preserve my energy because I was getting exhausted and I wasn't getting good sleep and I didn't have a home to rest in and the nervous system's always in kind of hypervigilance in a way because there's like no home and it can't root in and the body's just going, you're just kind of being drugged through hell in some ways. And so in my car, I had to really, really have boundaries with myself. Like, hey, one video or you're going to fry yourself and you're going to just, you need all the energy you, you have to get through the day. It's like, you know, to take care of yourself. There's some days it was just hard to even like want to brush my teeth. I was so tired, you know. But here living in this home, just <laughs> having nourishment of other, of like company and uh, just the land is so sacred and so just so rejuvenating and sleeping in a bed every night and there's heat and <laughs> there's like animals and I'm just cooking meals in the kitchen for myself, you know, and have my own shower and bathroom while I share it with people. But still, it's, it's, everything's just so nice. It's like, yeah, I have more to share. I can, I can, I can give, I can give more. And so why not? Why am I? Maybe, maybe the first video today was for some people, maybe this one's for others, you know, just like let it all come through and when it wants to come through. And I, today it feels good to get out of the way and, and to just post and, and just to do that. So yeah, that feels good. Uh, I think I kind of just said what I wanted to say, basically. I wasn't sure what I wanted to say. I just knew I wanted to like hop on and say some shit. <laughs> so there we go. Maybe you got something out of this. All right. Love you guys. Thanks for supporting me. Uh, it means a lot. See you in the next one. Na ma stay.